Merry Christmas. Welcome to worship on this Christmas Eve night. What a joy together on this holy night uh, to be able to gather for worship, to sing, to hear scripture, to share communion together, and to end in candlelight. So let me invite you to make sure that you have a candle. We have battery-operated candles. You might want to check and see how yours work. We have two different versions. So some of them you just push down and some of them you screw in. So make sure everybody has one. We've got some extras at the back and I just realized we have three up here so we probably have an extra up here too if anybody needs one. And then if you would like to pick up a worship guide, if you didn't already, we have those at the back as well and that will have our order of service to help you uh, follow along. If you're joining us online, I hope you have a candle at home you can use. Uh, you can also find the worship guide on our website, fbcpendleton.org. And if you'd like to gather communion at home, you can get any bread or crackers and juice and prepare to join us in communion a little bit later in our Christmas Eve service tonight. Welcome, welcome on this Christmas Eve. Let's go to God in prayer. God, for this holy night, for these holy moments gathered around the Christmas tree and around the manger, we give you thanks. We pray, God, that we might experience your love and joy and peace and hope on this night. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.
On Christmas Eve, we light all the candles on the Advent wreath, the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, and the Christ candle. Please join us in reading the words in bold in your worship guide. How does a weary world hold on to hope, practice peace, spread joy, or know love? How does a weary world shine a light into our bleakest night? Tonight, a child is born in Bethlehem. Tonight, Christ draws near. Tonight, we light the Christ candle. Tonight, we are not alone. God is near. Love has drawn close. Rejoice, for love loves this weary world. Amen.
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The word of God for the people of God. So I invite you to come now to Bethlehem as we glorify God. The Christmas carol that we're going to sing is number 110 in your hymnal, Away in a Manger. You should find that in the pew racks in front of you if you will turn to number 110 with me. Now there are three verses of that, and during the third verse, we're going to invite our children to come gather at the front with Pastor Jennifer for a story time. So you'll see Pastor Jennifer start moving, kids, and also I'll kind of wave you forward, and it'll be on the third verse. That's be near me, Lord Jesus. So would you stand in body or spirit as we sing away to manger?
we're going to have a story time for the children. So you guys can sit right here if you'd like to, and that way you can sit against uh, this kind of wall right here. And then you can look up here. There we go. I love seeing you in all your Christmas outfits. It's so special to be here on Christmas Eve. Is anybody feeling a little excited tonight? Yeah. Is anybody feeling a little nervous tonight? There's a lot going on, isn't there? Well, I want you to look up here at our decorations for just a minute. Some of you have seen these, and some of you maybe haven't seen all of them. We've got our tree over there, our poinsettias, the manger. We have a star up there. We have a manger scene right here, all these decorations. Let me ask you a question. Do you think there's room for anything else? Could we fit anything else up here? Do you think we could fit any more ornaments on the tree? If we had a ladder, that's right. I think we could. I think we could find some spots. Do you think we could fit any more poinsettias up here? We might have to walk around them a little more carefully, wouldn't we? But we could fit some more. Yes. Uh, do you think that we could fit anything in the manger? Yes. That's right. We have something very important we have to make room for the baby. And tonight we're thinking about making room because in the Christmas story in the Bible, it says that Jesus slept in a manger, which is what the animals ate out of, because he had no bed. He had no crib. There was no room. They didn't have a space ready for him because they were traveling and it was crowded and there wasn't a lot of space. But they found space, didn't they? They made room. So what we're thinking about tonight is how we we make room for Jesus. And even when there's a lot going on like Christmas or things are really busy and really exciting, but also can make us feel a little nervous, we can make room for Jesus because Jesus is always with us. So let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for being born, and thank you that you are always with us. Help us to make room for you, because we know, Jesus, you always make room for us, because you love us. Amen. All right, thank you guys for coming up to your, the story. You can go back to your seats, and we'll have some more singing in just a minute. We'll have some more singing if you will turn in your hymnal to number 127 and we'll sing together hark the herald angels sing would you stand together as we sing
king is asleep in the hay in the manger because there is no room, no room for baby Jesus, no crib for a bed. Perhaps we too know what it feels like for there to be no room. Perhaps we have felt left out and alone. Perhaps we have felt like we don't fit the mold that others have assigned to us. Perhaps we have searched for a space where we can experience peace and have struggled to find it. We too may feel as if there is no room. There is no room for us on the team roster, no room for us in a close-knit group of friends, no room for us in a relationship we desperately wanted. I'm reminded of the scene in the movie Forrest Gump, where Forrest, a young boy with developmental delays and braces on his legs, walks down the aisle of the school bus on the first day of school. No one wants him to sit with them. They say, this seat's taken, or you can't sit here. And finally, after walking the length of the school bus and standing awkwardly in the aisle for a moment, He hears what he describes as the sweetest voice in the wide world. A little girl offers, you can sit here if you want. From then on, he remembers, he and Jenny are like peas and carrots because she made room for him on that bus seat. In Luke's account of the Christmas story, we read that there was no room for Mary and Joseph in the inn. That is the traditional translation leading us to imagine a no vacancy sign and an innkeeper as an extra character in the story. But many biblical scholars suggest that a more accurate translation would be there was no room for them in the guest room. This wasn't a motel, but rather a family home. There was no room because so many people were there. This translation of guest room suggests a different image, one of Mary and Joseph crowded into a home full of relatives. There are not enough rooms, not enough beds for everyone. So they pull out the couch cushions, they make pallets on the floor, and they put the baby in the manger. They don't have room, so they make room. They make room for baby Jesus, welcoming him into a family full of love. On this holy night, we can rejoice, even in this weary world, by making room. Jesus was placed in a manger because there was no room. The space was full, yet they made room. The shepherds arrived from the field and found Mary and Joseph and the baby in the manger. The space was already full. The house was already overflowing. And yet somehow they made space for these sheep herders fresh in from the fields. Mary pondered all of this in her heart. How full her heart must have been. And yet she made room for wondering, for believing, for trusting the good news that had been told her months ago by the angel Gabriel. Jesus was born into a world that often tells people there is no room. In this world, people are often turned away. Doors are shut and hearts are closed. As Forrest Gump experienced it, this seat's taken. But Jesus spent his life making room. Jesus made room for tax collectors and sinners. Jesus made room for children. Jesus made room for 5,000 people to sit down and eat together. Jesus made room for Samaritan women, Jews, and Gentiles. He made room for the sick, the outcast, and the unclean. Jesus was always pulling up a seat, saving space, making room for people, inviting others to the table. And Jesus has made room for you. So tonight, on this holy night... We celebrate the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, by coming to this table to share the meal Jesus gave us. Jesus came into the world in a human body, and he gave that body for us, showing us the full extent of his love, a love that makes room. So come to the table tonight. Come with your faith and your doubt. Come with your questions and your hopes. 
come with your grief and your love. Just come. There is room for you here at Christ's table. We gather around this table tonight, remembering the Jesus who was born in a manger, who came into the world in a human body, would give that body for us. And the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and he gave thanks and broke it. And then Jesus gave the bread to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. And then after the meal, Jesus took up the cup. And as he prepared to pass the cup around, he said, this cup is the new covenant that is in my blood shed for you. Drink, and as you drink, remember me. Let us pray. God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and juice and for the reminders they offer us of the greatest gift, your son, Jesus, come into the world to live and love and teach and to give his life for us. We thank you, God, for this night, for this celebration of your holy birth. We pray, God, that as we come to the table, we might receive these gifts with open hearts. May we make room for one another so that others can also come to the table and receive of your great love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We invite you tonight to come to the table, to come forward. You may come by yourself or you may come with a family member or friend. Take your time. Gather around the table. We have kneeling benches around the altar. I will offer a word of caution. There's not a lot of space, so be careful walking through. If you'd like to kneel for a moment, you may speak with your family members. If you'd like to pray together, that is fine. Um, or offer words to one another, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ given for you. You. Um, but take your time. This is a holy night and a special time to share of communion together. I, I can also bring communion to you, or Chris can as well. If you prefer to remain in your seat, just lift your hand and one of us will bring the elements to you. Come, there is room at this table for you.
me invite you now to take your handheld candles and we will gather in a circle around the sanctuary as we sing Silent Night. When we finish singing Silent Night, let me invite you to remain in place for just a moment with the candles shining as we extinguish the light of the Advent candle and take it out of the sanctuary, reminding us that the light of Christ goes with us into the world. And so we'll gather in these two aisles and across the back, leaving the center aisle clear and across the front in a circle, squarish shape around the sanctuary with our candles to sing Silent Night. The words are printed in your worship guide so that you don't have to balance a hymnal as well.
family of faith. As the light from the Advent wreath has been carried out of the sanctuary, we leave this place going into a weary world with the light of Christ. Remember, you are God's beloved. So go rejoicing, for the world needs it. Amen.